Hey guys, it's Mel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Well, last week when I went to the eBay conference in Sydney, I spoke directly to one of the eBay employees and I asked him about ending and relisting our items. Now, this has been a little bit of a hot debate in the reselling community for a long time. Should we or should we not end and relist or end and sell similar? And there's a lot of controversial ideas, I guess, around it. Some people say yes, if you end them and sell similar or end and relist, they see a spike in their sales. And there's other people who just say it's a waste of time, focus on getting new listings up and running. But I do think there is a general consensus in the reselling community that people think that eBay hide some of their listings or they drop some of their listings off. Now for me, I don't personally use the end and relist or the end and sell similar. And that's because I like to run sales within my store that are based on the items that have been in there the longest. So if you didn't know, when you're running a sale promotion, you can actually sort it by the original date that you listed something. So you can see exactly how old it is. And I like to put those items on a more aggressive sale because what happens if I was to end and keep selling similar on my items, then it takes away all my sales history and it goes back and starts the listing at a brand new 30 days and I lose all that history of exactly how old and what the original date was that I listed that item. But let me show you a little clip because I took some video footage of me talking to eBay about this and I want to show it to you so you can hear it exactly from his mouth and exactly what he had to say. And then we'll go back and we'll deep dive it a little further. But you're saying roughly after nine months, if there's if it hasn't sold, you're actually better to end the listing and do a full seal similar. Depending on your category, yes. Okay, that's what I'm saying. okay so yeah. around that Nine if, months? If, if you're still at the top of search and your item is nine months old, yeah. then you don't need to renew your listing. But right. if you haven't sold an item in nine months yeah. and competitors' listings are selling above you in search yeah. on the front page, yeah. then your listing isn't going to come back unless you're way overpriced yeah. or um, you don't have a bunch of the stuff done I've just spoken about. Yeah. So things like item specifics, title optimized. Yeah. And it's just pulling in the listings that they you know maybe you don't have products identifiers. That might be a reason you're at the back. Yeah. And so so when you say that nine months, but it months, depends on what you sell. I was going to say, is that based on like when it, like a, a fast selling nine months category? is our definition for what is an unproductive listing. Not, so that's, if an item, okay. yeah, nine months. If it goes through nine goods or council cycles, it's considered unproductive. Right? Okay. Yeah. In nine months, if you haven't made a sale, you're basically not going to bring that listing back. So definitely realistic. We can't say for sure, like that might not be the right advice for something. For example, if you list a vintage robber that Roger the Rabbit book I said, like that's gonna be fine because it's a long tail category, it'll sell once in a blue moon, and therefore you don't have a problem if it doesn't sell because there's only two that you're competing against. If you're selling a white trainer and you're competing against fifty thousand dollar listings, then you are gonna have a problem because like you're at the bottom of a very long list of products, you're unproductive, you're never coming back, and therefore you should relist. But how do you make that decision? You've got to make the decision based on how competitive your category is, to be honest. Because it's not the same for vintage categories as it is for mainstream categories that could be, you know, white trainers or fashion. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> So I hope you could hear that okay because I was in a very noisy venue and it's hard to get some footage while there's a lot of noise around you. But what he was basically saying is our eBay listings go through nine 30-day cycles, nine months period, and then a lot of them are classed as an unproductive listing. Now he did state there that it clearly depends on what category you sell in. If you sell something that's retro or vintage or rare or collectible, then the results might be a little bit different for you. But he was saying that if you sell in a highly saturated category, which is probably like me with books, media, CDs, DVDs, fashion, he said the word fashion, if you're in a highly saturated category, your item hasn't sold within nine 30, 30 day cycles, and there's other listings that are like yours and they're selling above you, then it means your listings are dropping down to the bottom of search and it's very unlikely you're going to bring them back. Now, the hardest thing about this is eBay doesn't actually tell us in our seller hub what the original date was that we listed an item. It doesn't tell us how many cycles our listing has gone through. Why doesn't it come up in our seller hub and actually say the original listing date of the item and how many cycles it's been through so we can easily track this? So from my understanding, and somebody please correct me if I'm wrong about this, the only way that you can see a listing's original listed date is in the sales and the promotion category. Like if you're running a sale, you can actually sort it by the original date. So even though you can sort them in the sales and promotions tab, you can't actually end them in bulk. So if you've got 400 listings, 
sitting there that are over nine months old, you can't just bulk end those. You're going to have to go one by one into your active listings to find them all to end them. Now, here's where I come in handy for you guys, because <laughs> I've actually been personally tracking the month that I list all my items in my SKU system for over a year. Now, just to clarify, the reason that I do this is because I like it when I'm sending the offers. When I send an offer or receive an offer, it comes up and it actually shows you the SKU. So if I've got the month that I listed that item, when I'm on my phone and I'm out and about and I'm answering offers or sending offers, I can see exactly how old that item is in the offer section. So it just helps me when I'm accepting or sending an offer to know how aggressive I want to be with that offer because the longer my item has been listed, the more aggressive I want to be with accepting or sending that offer. So because I've been tracking this in my SKU system, it means I've got some data. I was actually able to go through my last 90 days worth of sold listings and I was able to get out my pen and paper and do a little tally thing and I was able to track what month I sold all my items in. So I've been able to have a look at how many of my sold items in the last 90 days actually came from listings that had been listed over nine months ago. I think from memory it was about 1,450 sales that I went through over the last 90 days to collect all this data from. But in June, I had 12 sales that were over the nine month period. In July, I had 32 sales over that nine-month period. And in August and the couple of days of September, I had 25 sales over the nine-month period. So in the three months, that's a total of 69 sales that were from listings that had been listed nine months and over. That's not many, 69 sales out of about 1,450. So that works out to be 4.76% of my sales in a three-month period came from listings over nine months old. 4.76% of my sales. Not much. So then it got me wondering, because I'm obviously selling bread and butter items, I'm selling in a saturated market. So it made me really wonder then, I wonder how many items of mine are selling that are over six months old. So because I had all the data there, I was able to still go back through that easily. 13.53% of my sales have come in that 90 day period from listings that are over six months old. So basically what it's telling me is 85% of my sales are selling within a six month period of them being listed. And after six months, it's like 13% <laughs> is being listed. That is not many. That is making me feel like for my own personal store, my books almost have a shelf life of about six months before they are getting buried in the search, unless they are probably like some of my more rare or collectible books. But the mainstream books, the bread and butter that I'm selling every day, to me, this data tells me that I've got about a six month lifespan for my books. So now I want to go into my back end here and I want to have a look how many listings are in my store that are actually over that nine month period? Like how many do I have that are that old? And how many do I have that are also over that six month period? And the only way I'm going to know this is to go into the sales and promotion tab, like which is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> but that's the only way I'm going to know how many actual old listings I've got. So let's go look. Okay, so you want to click here on your marketing tab. And then down the left hand side here, click on Markdown Sale. Then over the top right here, click on Create a Promotion and do a Sale Event Markdown. Now we're just doing a fake sale here, so let's just go in, select our items. So what we're looking at here is the days on site. Make sure you've got it set so you can see your oldest listings first. So I can see here that the oldest book that I've got on my site has been listed for 306 days. So now anything over the nine month period means it's going to be listed for over 270 days. So I basically need to scroll down this and see how many that I will have that have been listed that long. Now down the bottom of the page here, you can set it by items per page. 200 listings automatically there that have been listed for 302 days or higher. So then I'll go to page two and I'll start adding it up. I can see at the bottom of that page, we're still over the 270 mark. So I've got over 
400. So let me just go and add this up. Okay, so at the time of filming this video, I've got 3,902 active listings in my store. And I've also got 672 of those listings that were listed nine months or more. But I also wanna see how many listings are in my store over that six month mark. So I added that up and I've got 1,630 listings that were listed six months or longer ago. So 3,902 listings minus 1,630 old listing gives me 2,272 listings within my store that were listed in the last six months, which means possibly I've only got 2,272 listings in my store out of nearly 4,000 that are actually being pushed up in search. Wow. Oh, I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> I just feel lucky that I've got my own data because I've been tracking it in my SKU system for over a year now. But the moral of this is we probably need to actually be paying a little bit more attention to our old listings. I know there is the mentality of set and forget, and maybe with some categories that does actually work, but in a category like mine that is bread and butter, a very saturated market, I'm selling a lot of books that are competing with other sellers, maybe for me, I do need to actually be more aware of that and I need to be looking at ending my older listings, fixing them up, revising them, not just relisting them. I think that's a mistake if you just end them and relist them. If they've been through nine cycles and they haven't sold, there's probably something wrong with it. <laughs> and, you know, there's either something missing from your item specifics, your pricing is wrong. There's something either wrong with it or else it's just a dead item that's not worth selling on eBay. Really take a look at what you've got and how old it is in your store and make the decision based for your store. Because obviously everybody's selling in different categories and some of us are selling rare and collectible items. Like for me, if I've got a really rare and collectible book here, there's probably no reason why I need to end it and do a sale similar because it's got no competition anyway. It just needs to be waiting for that perfect buyer to come and get it. But all my Jamie Oliver that I've got, <laughs> some of it that I just saw has been listed since December. Mate, that Jamie Oliver is not coming back. <laughs> There is way too much competition for me to have a Jamie Oliver book that's been sitting there since December and hasn't sold while hundreds of other Jamie Oliver has been selling. I need to end those items that are like that, freshen them up with some new details and hopefully push them back up to the top of the search and get them sold. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope that you learned something from this video or just made you think about your own store a little bit more and how old some of the items might be in your store that are sitting there going stale. And if you missed my last video, I also gave some other tips that I got from the eBay conference. And if you hang around and you subscribe to my channel in the next video, I've got another one coming for you. Thanks very much, guys. See ya.